Hey guys, it's still FASD Awareness Month and I'm hoping to bring you good content throughout the month. Um, this week I'm going to go a little bit from this book called Embracing Your Child's Unique Abilities and it is from Michelle Pitts Brown. And I'm going to have her as a guest this Saturday and we're going to talk about this very topic. And so um, I wanted to read to you a part of her book and then talk about how I implement this in my family. So she has a section on what it looks like to develop a plan for inclusion for your kids, which I think is great. Um, and she has different steps that she's broken down. And one of them is focused on strengths, which I love. Once you've identified the ways your child can best grasp and process information, i.e. art, music, math, logic, memory, etc., use these methods to plan learning activities. Are you doing school at home? Avoid situations that do not meet your child's learning style to minimize frustration and make learning a positive experience. If your child is not a logical thinker, it may not be helpful to involve them in activities like mathematical games or puzzles. If music stimulates learning, nursery rhymes and sing songs can help assist with teaching new, new ideas. I need to do that more. That's a good, yeah. To create opportunities to learn, our family purchased and used flashcards, educational videos, building blocks, music that included nursery rhymes, and a host of other toys. We also labeled items in our home so that he, her son could associate the work with the items. I avoided other styles of learning that were not consistent with how he processed information. This was and continues to be an effective way to assist him with grasping new information. I love it. A lot of times we, including myself, try to fit our kids in this box where we expect that they're going to be able to do the things that we did or that our other kids did or even our other kids on the spectrum. It really doesn't matter. Um, and we have a hard time like doing the mental work it requires in order to think through how you would approach this from a different angle. It is really tough. Remember, I homeschool my kids, so I have to do this all the time. Um, and so I like what she's suggesting about uh, coming at things from whatever your kid's strength is. Um, so I need to do this more with music. Um, right now, we know that we change our expectations based on what our kids' strengths are. So like we have one kid that's really struggling with reading. And so he just is doing like read to me books where it highlights the word that you're reading. Um, and that's how he enjoys reading. Like we still want him to enjoy reading. Um, another one that struggles with being able to picture what the concept is and so he reads a lot of comic books and that's fine but maybe when you were younger like comic books were like not a good academic thing to read right so put away that misconception and focus on what your kid is good at and nurture that and that's the best way to see them grow so I hope that was helpful and don't forget to join Michelle and I this Saturday we're going to be chatting and we're going to do a giveaway with her book so you'll want to stay tuned and figure out how you can win this